Thank you for finding this video. I think I'd, uh, if you've already watched our worship service for this week, our online worship, I referred to a, another video that was going to be produced and put out. This is it, um, kind of a sermon, or sermonette of sorts, um, a reflection, I guess, on, uh, on the things that are going on in our world. So this morning, I want to talk a little bit about the hymnal. A shirt and a march. It's first, um, I guess, about the shirt. So this shirt I bought in 2008 when I was in South Africa with a group of young-ish clergy, uh, a United Methodist clergy. Uh, we had gone to South Africa to learn. We didn't go to proselytize. We didn't go to evangelize. We went to learn from our brothers and sisters um, in, the, in the Methodist Church of Southern Africa, uh, specifically, and in other churches and, uh, tangentially, to learn from them how the church had played a significant role in, uh, in the country's overcoming, turning over the, uh, this so severe uh, system of racial segregation called apartheid. We felt like the church had done something good. Pastors, lay people had done something well in that case. We wanted to learn from them. And so we went and learned we did. Challenged, stretched. We, came, we all came back different, which was great because our theme, our goal was to preaching for transformation. And this trip in specifically was to prepare us, to ready us for those days when we might be called into action uh, to speak that prophetic word. And so I bought this shirt. It's a form of a presidential shirt, not really a presidential shirt. If you're familiar with Nelson Mandela, he would wear these regal, beautiful shirts that were, uh, some of them very intricately designed. Well, I didn't have enough money for that, but I did, uh, I did have enough money for this uh, that's a similar kind of a form of a presidential shirt. So I bought that before I left. And when I came back uh, into the States, I would pull this shirt out and wear it whenever the Scripture in the day were saying something particularly difficult. It became my prophetic shirt. That was my voice, I guess. Clark Kent going into the telephone booth and coming out of Superman, that shirt. It was that thing that I felt like gave me power the ability to speak frankly, to speak prophetically, to hear and to say a hard word. At the church where I was previously serving, when I would wear this shirt, uh, there were some people who, who, bought, who got into it and they, they, they understood me when they saw the shirt coming. They knew, you got a hard word to say this morning, don't you? And it was true. Now I've learned just recently, that I really never needed that shirt. I never needed that shirt at all. Like I said, we had gone there to learn from the church, and the church was uh, had done some good work. And um, it's a rare thing for the church to be able to come together around an issue. There's so much that divides us. Our church polity is different. The way we select pastors is different from one another. The way we do business is different. The way we worship is different. We're even different. We're, we're different socioeconomically. We're different racially. We're, we're different in so many different ways. We know that from the United Methodist Church. Goodness, we don't even do things the same way. We don't even agree on one another on, on things together. And we're in the same denominations, for goodness sakes. In fact, we're readying probably to separate, to form a new denomination out of this denomination because we so strongly disagree with one another. <laughs> and so I, it's crazy that I'm telling you uh, that what happened on Saturday, June 13th is almost miraculous that churches of different flavors and different stripes of different sizes with different leadership types and styles 
Baptist, Southern Baptist, Missionary Baptist, I guess Free, free Will Baptist maybe, um, non-denominational churches, Methodist churches, not just the United Methodist Church, Congregational Methodist churches, the Church of God, uh, Cleveland, Tennessee, but also the Church of God in Christ came together yesterday, I would say yesterday, on Saturday, June 13th, for what is this? A march, a unity march for change. In this unique moment in time, the church, or at least a large portion of the church in Pell City, in this small little place in Alabama, and it really wasn't a whole big, huge fraction of, of, the, of the membership of these collective churches or the population. It was probably maybe a little bit over 1% or 1.5%, 2% at tops. Uh, of the population of Pell City. And if we look at the St. Clair County itself, almost 90,000 people, mere fraction, very small in the grand scheme of things. How many people were there? But they spoke with one voice. Now, what they came together about is the kind of stuff that you and I have been reading headlines about. I know that there are, there are many different things that we can find from our news sources, Facebook, Twitter, from MSNBC, Fox News, from all the different sources that we find, and they conflict with one another. But there's something at the core that we can agree on. We don't need to agree on policies. I'm not pushing policy. We don't need to agree on politics. I'm not pushing politics. But there is something that we have come to an agreement on, all of these different churches, all of these different pastors. Racism is sin. There's no ifs, ands, and buts about it. The thought that, the thought that God had created one race as superior and another as inferior, those are bygone days. Have to be. They need to be. Why? Because Jesus would say that to us. We have to understand that. And this world in which we live, we all recognize that there, there are changes that need to be made. Like I said, I'm not getting into policy. We didn't get into policy. All we did was that we came together and we said, something needs to change. And what is the something that first needs to change? Well, the change initially has to start with us. I realized yesterday that I didn't really need the shirt. I'll still wear the shirt. I may preach prophetically so I'm using the shirt sometime. Um, but I learned that I didn't really need the, church, the shirt to be prophetic. Because Jesus was already doing that in me. Jesus was already doing that in you as well. If we, as we have seen the harm, the pain as we have, as what we have seen confirmed for us, the, the really the validity and the stories that we have been hearing from our African American brothers and sisters for generations, for our whole lifetime, for lifetimes after lifetimes, for centuries. We have seen some of this confirmed and it gets at our soul. Something's wrong, something needs to be fixed. I don't know what that is. It's overwhelming for me to think about that. But I do know that it's part of our job. This brings into the third thing. I told you, three different things. A shirt, a march, and a hymnal. So here's the hymnal. In our baptismal covenant. This is our baptismal font. And we baptize in many different ways. You can baptize by sprinkling, by pouring, or by immersion. We as United Methodists will baptize in all three of those modes. And so if you are seeking baptism, if you've never been baptized and you'd like to be baptized, reach out to us. We would love to uh, welcome you and to initiate you into Christ's church and incorporate and see you incorporated into God's mighty acts of salvation. As we baptize someone, whether it's an infant or whether it's an, old, an adult, we ask them three questions. The first question is, do you renounce the spiritual forces of wickedness? Repent, reject the evil powers of this world, and repent of your sin. The third one is the, really the one that nails it all down. Do you confess Jesus Christ as your Savior? Put your whole trust in His grace and promise to serve Him in union with Christ's church, which is open to people of all ages, nations, 
and races. But it's really the middle question that speaks to what brought us together at First Baptist South and then walked up to the courthouse on Saturday, June 13th. It's this question. Do you accept the freedom and power God gives you to resist evil, injustice, and oppression in whatever forms they present themselves? Now, every child who cannot prof profess this for themselves, their parents are asked this question. They're expected to answer it. And they usually answer this way. We do. Every baptismal candidate, whether it's through uh, pouring, sprinkling, or immersion, as they, as they are preparing for baptism, is asked this same question. Do you accept the freedom and power God gives you to resist evil, injustice, and oppression in whatever forms they present themselves? And they answer, we do. And brothers and sisters in Christ, every single time we have somebody that is joining the church through confirmation or through baptism, and we ask that question of them, maybe you don't know this, but we are affirming that again for ourselves. Every single time we ask a family, we ask an individual, we ask a person, do you accept the freedom and power that God gives you to resist evil, injustice, and oppression in whatever forms they present themselves, we as congregants are being asked that question ourselves. Do we? Do we accept the freedom? Do we accept the power to resist evil, injustice, and oppression, however they present themselves? And we answer, we do. So we can agree, we will disagree on how things work, how things need to work. We will disagree on policies and we will disagree on different positions. But a good many people in the Pell City and the greater Pell City area came together on Saturday, June 13th in a unity march for change and said, while we can disagree on some things, we're standing firm on this. We're taking the next step in what we believe will be many steps along the road to reversing, undoing the damage that racism has borne in our country. And let's not fool ourselves. The damage is real. The pain is real hurt is real and it is not overcome overnight we will need power it doesn't come in the form of a shirt <laughs> this one or this one we need power it doesn't even come in the form of a march we need power and freedom and it can only come from God. And so, brothers and sisters in Christ, I invite you to continue the journey with me as we, together, take what is the next right step 